you just know. Very early you just have the feeling that this is something you want to do and you look at things differently maybe than other people. You can work glass in very different ways. And behind me you see maybe the most common way the average person look at glass is what can be very well designed, very beautiful to look at and also can be very useful. But on the side you see two examples of my pieces. My work, you have to get much closer to see what's going on. It's not the color what directly speaks to you. It's more the theme and the idea, what's important. I work with glass in three different ways. Here you see a pair of children's hands, and this is an example how I use glass in sculpture. The second way is in my two-dimensional work and I basically use it like I would use paper but glass offers me the possibility of using a background and a foreground because of its transparency. And in addition to this I attach to the glass tissue paper to create even more layers. The third way I use glass is in my objects and the three-dimensional objects I have also the space in between different glass layers. My inspirations they come from a personal visual diary and the objects I collect they don't have to be necessarily a part of the piece at the end but they do give me the comfort of finding a new story to translate into my work The piece I made for Transformation 1 called Vogelkuss in German, because this piece is made in Germany, and Birdkiss, the translation. And it shows the transformation of a boy into an animal, human creature. And by getting kissed by a bird, that this boy would reach another level, a higher spirit, to become ones with nature. The three cylinders just show different stages of this transformation. I start from the inside and work my way to the outside. That's how these uh, objects are built. Here you see actually an unfinished inside. This piece will be carved and engraved and painted and then I will place this inside of a dome-shaped glass and before I finally assemble the piece to a hole. The dome shape around this glass is also engraved inside and the outside and painted. So I already put several layers on this glass and I think it's ready to cut out. So with this knife, I will cut along this line very hard so to make sure you cut all the way through. Now I just peel the tape off. I think that's pretty much done. So now I pulled off the tape and exposed the negative space between the two figures. And with the sandblaster now I will focus the gun very close to the tape. And now let's go to the sandblaster. Put my piece inside. Okay, it should be done. So that should be fine. Let's go over here and take off the tape. And it feels very good. That's the negative space I wanted to get rid of. And that's what I have left. In a lot of cases I recycle the negative space I cut out and use it as another layer of my objects.
Now I remove just the outside tape. Fix this image to the, the glass so it doesn't move. So with this engraving machine I just draw a line into the glass. I'm just following the, the lines of the figure. By removing the picture, you see what I did to the glass. I engraved a fine line to capture the image of the figure. So the next step would be that I would do the same thing I did with the girl I would do with the deer image. After the engraving the line, I would use paint to push into the engraved areas. And then I use all kind of painting techniques. It's, it's really a mixed media painting idea how I finish then the final piece. And I also add other materials than glass. Ten years ago, I uh, made this piece, Bird Kiss 2, for the Raphael Fauners Prize. Ten years later, I was during the Transformation 6, what's again in the material glass. For me, surreal almost to be back, and it feels very, very uh, strange on a good side to see your old pieces, be at the same time looking at all the new work from very young artists and also from some veteran artists, and that's very exciting.